Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. We have a great guest today. I'm really excited about this guest. I've been trying to connect with him for a while. Zach, first say hello to everybody and introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. I'm Zach uh, from new to torahcom uh, Great to be finally be talking with Paul Neeson. Uh, we've waited a long time for this. Yes, and Zach, uh, you, not, unlike... You know, we both have beards, so we have that in common. And uh, but we didn't grow up with a beard, or we didn't think beard was significant uh, until we discovered that there's more to everything than what appears to be in today's world. Zach, first, you, if, if I'm correct, did you grow up? Uh, what's your uh, spiritual background? Did you grow up Christian? I grew up raised in the Southern Baptist Church. Uh, yeah, absolutely, from day one uh, up until just a few year, few short years ago. Okay, so uh, you're you're pretty much a Southern Baptist, and how were you really like into it, or were you just like the typical Christian that says they were raised Christian and just never goes to church other than Easter and Christmas? Uh, for most of my life, yeah, I was the lukewarm Christian, uh, raised up in a Baptist church, went to a youth group, but I mean, I, I guess I took it seriously, sort of seriously, um, but I was lukewarm. I totally believe I was lukewarm. Um, it was a number of years ago when I started, about during college, when I started really getting serious with my faith and di diving deeper and learning about the subject of evolution versus creation. That's a really hot topic of mine. And so uh, I and actually, the last number of years before Torah, I was teaching uh, creation versus evolution inside my Baptist church. Uh, I was teaching, uh, going around the, the church at different Sunday school classes. It was probably the largest Baptist church in Missouri. And I was teaching creation versus evolution in the churches. So at that time, I was very serious about my faith, and I was very serious about uh, not being lukewarm anymore and trying to understand, you know, uh, how is it best that I can serve my Creator? And really, I was at a humble place in my life where I was on my knees asking the Father for greater wisdom. And guess what happened next? <laughs> well, as you were doing that, uh, what what did happen? When did you go from being that no longer a lukewarm Christian to a, a, a really spirit-filled Southern Baptist who's living according to the concepts of what they say Southern Baptism is. And then to explain to us what happened and where you're at today also. Yeah, we read a book by Francis Chan uh, called Crazy Love and okay. Lukewarm and Loving It. Uh, there was a, a video series uh, that was out there by that name. And so we basically, I mean, that, that started the whole path of me going out and trying to figure out uh, uh, what, it, what it's going to take so that I don't have to hear those words on Judgment Day, um, depart from me, I never knew you. And so that scared me, and uh, me and my family started the quest of going out and searching for more wisdom. And uh, it was a, a conference that came to St. Louis about three years ago. Uh, you were there, and uh, Jim Staley was there, and Brad Scott, and Bill Cloud, and a lot of other people were there. And I was always a big fan of prophecy. And I believe uh, the name of the conference was something in, in tune with that. And uh, that's when me and my wife went, and we just had our socks blown off by what we heard. And so uh, it was from that point on, uh, we really uh, decided to dig deeper. And it was at about that time I lost my job. I, had, I had, was making more money traveling uh, to Dallas from St. Louis every week and, and more money than I had ever made in my life. And uh, we didn't really have anywhere to spend this money. It was just kind of going in the bank. And at the time I went to that conference, about a month later, I lost that job, the contract ended. And so I had all this money in the bank. And so guess what I did for four months? I came home, I, I woke up every day at my house and I studied my scriptures because, you know, what I had learned at that conference uh, had awakened something inside of me to want to dig deeper, to find out, you know, what, what, are, what, is, what is sin? What is sin? And if sin is transgression of the law, well, then I better go back first and find out what that law is and at least know it, and, and then try to walk it out as best I know how. I'm already saved by, gr by grace through faith. But at that point, how do I walk out that faith? How do I walk out that faith that, that's going to be pleasing to the Father? And as you were doing that, what was, was your wife on all of this? What was she on it? Yeah, we, we sat down. It was a Saturday night. Um, uh, during the conference, I had... Uh, we went to like Waffle House or something, I think, afterwards. So, yeah, we were sitting at the Waffle House and testing everything. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, we're, we, we decided to say, uh, we told each other, listen, if we can't, if we see something in this, in, it, we see something here that's not going to go, that does not match scripture, uh, then we're out of here. We're not going to do it. 
but we started to test everything. And for the next four months, I began to test everything against the scriptures. And lo and behold, you know, what we discovered, you know, changed my life and changed my wife's life. Now, when you and, say you were testing everything, what do you mean? Wait, in, in your environment or actually in the scriptures you were reading? Well, in, 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 the, in the scriptures I was reading, I, I was going back and testing these teachings that I was hearing from, you know, you and others and, and just this whole concept of the Torah and seeing the New Testament in a completely different light uh, than I had ever seen it before. Sure. And your wife was in 100% agreement with what you were doing? Absolutely. And uh, uh, not only that, but her parents at the same time, uh, unbeknownst to us, were also, uh, they were living in Texas, uh, were also discovering this path as well. And so um, uh, I remember it was just a, a few months back, it was during a, a Thanksgiving uh, family day uh, thing, uh, dinner, and uh, my wife's father remarked that, you know, I think uh, something about these feast days is still important today. And he was kind of talking about Leviticus, and we all kind of like, oh, oh that's interesting. We, we didn't really know what he was going at, what he, what he was talking about. Lo and behold, he was discovering the same things, and uh, so her family was getting it. Uh, my family still thinks I'm crazy and that I'm in a cult. <laughs> well, what happened? Okay, so uh, that's your family, but tell us what happened with uh, the church you were going to. Uh, explain was, that one. I was still teaching every Sunday uh, and uh, going to church, and uh, I, was, uh, I, I was part of the education department, and there were, there were classes who were requesting me to come teach their adult classes uh, about creation and about Genesis. And that's what I was teaching. I was teaching solely on Genesis and creation. And, uh, and there were people who were asking me to come do that. And I was having audiences, uh, Sunday school classes of literally 100 people. Uh, this was the largest Southern Baptist church in Missouri that I was teaching at. And so um, uh, I started to you know, divert a little bit because I was seeing Genesis from a different light. Uh, and uh, uh, the light of Torah. And so I was using that and I was kind of implementing some things. Uh, and other than making a big hubbub, we decided to finally leave the church. Um, we just left quietly. I know some people kind of make a statement or do this or that when they leave a church and it's kind of a big drama scene. We didn't do any of that. We just decided to go ahead and leave, leave quietly. And uh, some people have come up later and asked why we left. Uh, and I've then told them why, but uh, I didn't want to make a big deal about it because I didn't want I didn't want to cause any problems. Sure, sure. And uh, your friends that knew you that were in the church, maybe you kept speaking to, or your friends in general, did they start to see a difference in you? Absolutely. And uh, I mean, yeah, some of them asked why we left. They 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 saw I wasn't shy about why I left. I didn't really say anything on Facebook or what, me leaving the church, but on Facebook I was posting things that were different that they had not heard about about before. Um, uh, one of the couples that we were very good friends with also left the church, um, and so uh, uh, that was that was cool. And so we maintain a great relationship with them today. And so um, uh, it's it's I mean it's been an adventure from the very beginning. Um, but yeah, it's it's been kind of hard because some people think you're crazy, but uh, you know it is what it is. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, uh, your your family was on board, so that's a good thing. That's a challenge a lot of people have, but you have taking it to the next level. I don't know if you're doing it full time, but you've created a wonderful resource for people that are new to the Torah lifestyle to learn more about it. So similar to the way when you went to that conference, you were kind of, you know, all of a sudden you had this all this information that wasn't out there before. And right. so you wanted to be that same person. You've created a wonderful resource that when did you come up with the idea and tell us a little about it? <laughs> Um, I was just thinking, you know, I've always been into websites. That's what I do for a living. I create websites, I create graphics, and that's really my, how I make my living. Uh, but uh, um, I was always involved in other things, um, you know, to make websites and stuff like that. So I decided to make a website called New to Torah because that's what I was. I was new to Torah. And I know there are a lot of other people who are new to Torah. In fact, I heard Brad Scott one time say, he says, he says the amount of people who are now coming out and waking up to Torah he's never seen before, just in the last nine months, has eclipsed everything else he's seen in the past. And I heard him say this in St. Louis recently, and I couldn't believe it. And it was the same thing I had, I have experienced. So many people are getting it and, 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 and realizing what sin is. They're going back to the Torah and finding out what our Father says sin is. And so uh, I decided to create a website called New to Torah. And uh, it's a resource of all kinds of blogs and videos and all kinds of postings uh, that, uh, from people like you and others that I post on there for people to share and see. Well, that is wonderful. And how has uh, the response been? Has it, uh, I mean, are you able to look at the 
the numbers and see how many more people are watching it now than when you started and how's the feedback been questions wise from people? Uh, yeah, I mean, the feedback I get is remarkable. I get so much email now, I can't even read it all. And uh, I'm, I'm flattered by that, that people would take the time to write me and ask me questions or, or just comment on my videos or, or my, uh, my blogs or things like that. And so, I mean, I, I really am flattered. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, an outstanding uh, feedback that I've been getting. I love doing it and I would love to do it full time. And I try to do as much as I possibly can. I'm now living on community. This is actually one of the community buildings that we built recently here with a bunch of other Hebrew saints uh, who are trying to walk out the path that they best know how uh, according to the Father's ways. Well, what would be your message to anyone watching this right now who are, are you know, not even lukewarm Christians, that are, are strong Christians, they've been going to church for a long time, and I believe in the, the whole church ideas and so on. What would be your message to them as somebody who uh, was there and where you are now? You know, really, it's to go back and, and ask yourself what sin is. Uh, what is sin? Because if, if, if it's according to your own heart, we know the scriptures say your heart is, is deceitful above all things. So it's not really up to me to decide what sin is. It's not up to some preacher or pastor or teacher to decide what sin is. Only the Father can tell you what sin is. And to understand that, we have to go back to see what his word says in his Torah, his, the instructions he has given his children uh, to follow forever throughout our generations. And so that's what I would ask someone who was new to Torah or was thinking about this to go back and see what sin is, see what he calls wickedness, see, we, see, see what he calls holy and what he calls profane. And then I think once you do that, you're going to see that these things are, should be kept still today. You know, we're saved by grace through faith. You know, Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, has taken away the condemnation that I deserve. But now that that condemnation has been taken away and the punishment's gone because he freed me from that, uh, wh what do I do now? My, I, I should continue to try to walk out the instructions the Father gives us to, to show that I'm living, I'm walking out that walk the way he wants me to. And, and so, uh, yeah, anybody who's new to this, go back and just answer the question, what is sin? Well, what would your reply be when they say and reply back to you, whatever sin is, it doesn't matter because, you know, we have Yeshua, so that's not important to us anymore. What would your reply be to that? Well, I mean, you know, how would Yeshua want you to live? I mean, that's that that at that point, you know, I, I don't know if I can help you <laughs> because, you know, you 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 want to what what, the, what are the standards Yeshua has? Does he have no standards? Does he have a standard at all? Who sets that standard? Would you and agree? So, would you agree that's a very common reply you'd get from many Christians? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, most of the time when I say what is sin, uh, sin is transgression of the law. Well, the reply usually I get back, well, what is the law? And you get a whole gamut of answers at that point, you know, the Ten Commandments or, or you know, the moral law versus ceremonial law, which is a big one nowadays from people like John MacArthur. <laughs> but the, the word ceremonial law and moral law appear nowhere in your scriptures. That's something that modern day theologians have made up completely because they don't have an answer to what is sin, at least the, the correct answer. Sure. And what about, uh, let me ask you this, how many times since you uh, discovered this have you been called a legalist? Oh, I was just called a Judaizer <laughs> the other day. <laughs> I mean, it's all, all the time, and that's okay. Um, they don't understand that I'm not trying to promote uh, works for salvation. I'm not trying to say you have to keep the law to be saved. I'm saying that I'm already saved by the work on the, on, that the Messiah has done for me. Okay, And, and because of that work he's done, uh, the sacrifice he made, I am now free from the bondage of breaking the law. Uh, that doesn't mean I throw the law away. Uh, I'm just free from the curse the law brings when I break it. Uh, but I should still continue to try to walk out that law, those instructions the Father gives us uh, the best of my ability. And I'm, I'm going to fail. We're all going to fail. But that doesn't mean I don't try, or at least know what they are. <laughs> exactly. Well, I tell people that, you know, we're saved by the blood of Messiah, but, you know, the fact that because we are saved by his blood is a great reason to want, you know, we don't keep the guidelines and instructions. So we have to, we keep them because we want to, you know, right. you know, if you're truly saved, you should have every desire to do this stuff, you know, but, uh, it's a lot, my people destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right. Yeah. And I, I get a tremendous blessing. My family gets tremendous blessing from keeping, uh, the Torah and from at least reading it and going through the instructions and seeing, you know, what it applies to, uh, to us today. And really this is about a self-examination a self-examination because I can go read through the Torah and then self-examine my life 
Zach Bauer right here, new tutorial and say, hey, listen, what am I doing wrong? How, how can I better follow the instructions of the father and then adjust accordingly? Because, you know, we're all going to fall short. But this when you read the Torah, it gives you a very clear indication of, hey, this is where you're falling short. You know, and 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 Paul said, it, I did not know sin, but by the law, meaning if he didn't know the law, he wouldn't even know what sin was. And so we educate ourselves. We come to the knowledge of sin and how to walk uh, the way the Father wants us to by reading and knowing uh, what his instructions are. Wonderful, wonderful, Zach. I'm so excited about your website. I really love it and all you're doing. And uh, everybody that's watching, I'll put the website below the screen, newtutora.com. And uh, Zach, anything else you want to say before we end? Uh, not much. Uh, I'm, I really enjoy doing this, and uh, it's been a long time coming. we got to meet uh, in person again sometime soon. I met you briefly when you were in St. Louis that one time. And uh, but I'd like to meet you again. I, I agree with a lot of the stuff you, you teach. And uh, we're, we're big on aquaponics here and, and growing gardens and and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. You got to come out and visit once you once you, you have, we get some more things settled here. You got to come out. Definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for being a guest here on Tour Life Ministries and keep up the great work and everybody get to Zach's site. Blessings. All right. Shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world, 